This was a great day. Look, this is a great day for World Cup to see all the things that these are days that come once every four years. You see these dreams obtained and deferred and I, I, completely I, I, demoralized. I was, I was say, I'm excited I, for the World Cup we, still. I, as we talk about development and, and mainly with you know in, in terms of, of U.S. development and where they go from here, but. Back in, in 2002, for the 2002 qualifiers, I, th I think it was, I played for Trinidad and Tobago. We beat Panama 7 0. And then Panama didn't even bother to. They were so, they were so bad that they didn't want to play. So the, next. <laughs> they did, they, so the second game, they, they forfeited, well, not, not forfeited, but they asked to come and play in Trinidad for the second game in, in one of the earlier qualifiers. And it was after that. My understanding is Panama pretty much took all the pieces up apart with their soccer with their soccer program look, and tried to that. figure out where do we go from here. And, and that's the thing. There's there's no one solution. There's no quick fix. There's no manual for this. You have to do what's right for you. And Panama, what what they identified was we needed to get more kids playing a game. End of story. Yeah, and and their investment was in building pitches in all of the lower socioeconomic communities around Panama. can't see me, but I'm waving my arms. And, and, it and, like ha ha and get hallelujah. people playing. Before the World Cup in 2006, after we qualified, February of 2006, we played Iceland in London. Beat them 2-0. Their focus on their development, build pitches all over the country, let kids play. You mean they don't charge kids? They don't charge kids. Spain, again, and, and this is kind of going to taking the pieces apart and not using a, a manual to, to build your program, which I think too many people do. Spain, perennial underachievers. Absolutely. Then it's hard, it's hard to remember sat those down, days. It's hard to remember those days. Belgium. Sat down, tried to figure Germany, out. Germany, France, almost the World Cup. And Spain, oh, I, read, I, I read this uh, uh, about Spain and, and their development. Tried to figure out what do we do. They said, listen. Physically, we can't compete with the Germans and the English, etc. Kind of, this is pre Gordon Strachan, we aren't gen genetically good enough. <laughs> but they, we, can't, we can't compete physically with the Germans and the, and the Spanish. But we're good technically. So, what we do, we continue to develop our young players technically and we'll keep the ball. And the thinking is if we have the ball, you don't have it. Correct. Right. And now everybody kind of went off and, oh, this ticky tacker, and you're just keeping the boy and not doing anything. But their mentality was if we have it, you don't. And if anybody, you can only, score, you can only score when you have it. So again, their approach was we're doing what's, what's good for us, what suits our football, and what, understand, what we, our players, understand. And so if U.S. are now talking about development, what happens at the top? Um, it's totally respective of you've got to take all the parts apart. You've got to look at MLS on its own, look at the national team, look at USL, look at college soccer, look at pay for play, look at what you're doing in the communities and figure out how it all feeds into a better player coming through from top to bottom. Do, do we look overseas? I don't want to outsource American jobs for, uh, for this sport. I think for us in broadcasting, whether it's administrative, and the, whether the players, there was that time where we looked at the German-American players, we looked at the coaches, uh, obviously with Jürgen Klinsmann, Mexico, it was Fenjör and Eriksson. I want to believe that we have all of that within these walls, but there was moments like this where I figured we need a little help. Is that something I we need to do? I don't care is where there, the coaching comes from as long as it's good coaching, Max. I, I saw a U-17 or U-20 uh, World Cup breakdown of where each kid was from each state. And it was, like a, it was funny. All of these kids were from the East Coast, and there were no kids from the states of California, Nevada, one only from Texas, That's, Arizona. So that is telling me a lot of these kids who come from diverse backgrounds, such mm. as myself, are falling through the cracks, the cracks and not being, not even being looked at. We've where been talking it, about for 20 years, and then there, and they there, still fall. There the are cracks. other countries like Mexico who are poaching these kids, and mm -hmm. they see value in them. The way we see the game is a lot different than other countries, and maybe that's the problem. We value other things. We value athleticism. We value, uh, we, we value size. We value other things instead of technical ability. Uh, this player's too small. This player's not fast enough. I don't see value here. I don't think he'd make it there. We need to send him to school because the university program is the only way he's going to benefit. That's what he's going to do. The rest of the world does it differently. Mm -hmm. We need to start following suit.